everybody? So today we are here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and today we're going to be meeting up with an entrepreneur. His name is Austin Zayback. By the time he was 26, he did over 2,000 real estate transactions and over $1 billion in sales. So today we're going to go check out his operation, his real estate company, and also his wholesaling company as well. And we're going to do a full-on interview with him and we're going to join him in his podcast. So let's roll. This is Austin's uh... Yeah, I'll see the right in there. You just go in for his office on the left. Thank okay, you. cool. Hi. 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 Operations here. Mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, you own a couple of business. Yep. Right. Real estate. Yep. Company. Mm -hmm. How many agents do you currently have? So on the retail side of twenty five agents. Twenty five yep. agents. Twenty five. Out of mm -hmm. twenty five agents, how much uh, as far as like sales volume you guys are doing? We'll do year? over a hundred million this year. Hundred million. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, just just the retail. Okay. So over a hundred million. Yeah. So you own a real estate company, wholesale company, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep, and our wholesaling company, so wholesaling was my, the thing that I got into first, right? Like yeah, in 2014, yeah. got into wholesaling, and um, that was like the original thing. So I, was, I never planned on being an agent. Really? You know, I never planned on owning a team, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. That happened as like a byproduct mm -hmm. of wholesaling, right? So I was wholesaling. My mentor at the time was like, Austin, like, you got to go get your license, you know? And I'm like, how come, you know? He's like, well, you can double dip, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I got my license, and then obviously I started doing social media. And uh, then people started asking me, like, hey, I want to be on your team, you know, over time. And I didn't have a team. So that, you know, evolved to me having yeah. a team. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good thing because as you're doing the wholesaling, if you can't pick it up as a wholesale, yeah. right, now that you're an agent, you can pick it up and just take the listing. Yep, exactly. Okay. Which is where the idea One Roof came into play. Okay. So One Roof was really a brand that we created as a result of us having multiple different kind of companies that we were running underneath of one roof. That's dope. Where we were like serving the consumer, right? Because our idea was always like, hey, you know, so many agents, you know, they sit down at a dinner table with a, a seller. Mm -hmm. And if the seller doesn't want to list their property, it's a dead lead, right? Yes. And wholesalers sit down with the opposite problem. If the person doesn't want to sell for cash, it's a dead lead. Like they're a one trick pony, right? So one roof was just the idea of, hey, we're, we, we can do it all. Like, what do you need as a homeowner? What do you need as a seller? And we cross-train everybody on everything. I like that. Yep. So basically, everybody that's doing the wholesaling is also an agent here as well. Exactly, and vice versa. Okay. So we train our agents you know, to understand the world of investing and how to wholesale and how to find cash buyers. And like, you know, we give them all of our tools and resources yeah. to be able to do that. And then our acquisitions people also have the option to be real estate agents and do that whole thing as well. Okay. Yep. Now, when we talk about wholesaling, for some of the viewers out there that mm -hmm. are just getting started into the investment game, what is wholesaling? So wholesaling is just the idea of basically getting a property under contract where you're the buyer, mm -hmm. right, with a seller. So you're getting it under contract typically at a discount, right, below market value. Instead of you actually closing on that property, though, and purchasing the property, you're just flipping the contract, right? You're taking that purchase contract, and prior to close of escrow, you're finding a new buyer, right, at maybe a little bit more than what you're under contract for with the seller. Mm -hmm. So if you're under contract for 150, I go find a buyer that's willing to pay 160. I make 10 grand. I step out of the deal, right? I assign that contract to the end buyer or double close it to the end buyer, and then they end up actually buying the property. I make my 10 grand or whatever. Nice. Yep. Now, from a legal standpoint in this state, like, mm -hmm. how does that work? Because it could be like a conflict of interest and stuff yep. like that. So, so how, how do you get past that? It's all disclosure, okay. right? So the biggest thing that I think, there's like one or two states in the entire country where they're really strict, right? Yeah. Most of the states in the country, it's a disclosure thing. They don't want real estate agents to not disclose that they're an agent and that they, you know, so I, you have to just make sure you're disclosing when you're talking to a seller like if I'm an agent, I'm held to a higher standard, right? Because yeah. I'm an agent. Now, if I wasn't an agent and I was just a normal dude buying a property, then there's really not a lot of disclosure actually, mm -hmm. because I'm 
just a normal dude buying a property, right? Yeah. And then I just decided at the last minute to actually sell that, my rights to buy it mm -hmm. to somebody else. So it's when you become an agent that you have to abide by a higher level of disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I like about your company, One Roof, is that you also have the option to buy it yourself yeah. and also flip properties as right. well. A hundred percent. Yep. So is, is your agents going in and buying it themselves or you, your company is mm -hmm. buying it and flipping it as well? We cherry pick. So oh, like, really? yeah, we, we, you know, whatever properties, like if we identify that we're about to wholesale a property and we're yeah. like, Hey, like that really looks like a property that we want to buy. Mm -hmm. Then we obviously have the opportunity to do that. Right. Um, so it really just depends. You know, I have an agent, um, this is her desk actually okay. right here. She is 21 years old. Uh, she got into real estate in 2021, so last year, like I believe October-ish, and in the first couple of months of being an agent, she made over a quarter of a million, net to her. Yeah. She closed like $15 million in real estate, um, and then she did the same thing again in 2022. Like the beginning of the year, closed another $15 million in real estate, made another quarter of a mil, and she just uh, actually went under contract on her first rental property. Oh, wow. So at 21 years old, you know. Dude, that's big. So it's huge. Yeah, so, you know, we, we again, it, it really... It's cool, you know, doing the one roof thing, like you said, because yeah. we have options, right? And then we can even buy them and keep them as a rental, too. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to build a rental port. We already have a rental portfolio. It's yeah. smaller right now. I want to acquire more and then eventually start a fund, raise capital, again, all under one roof. Okay. Yeah. How big is this office here? This office is probably 5,000, 5 or 6,000 okay. square feet. Yeah. So what's the operations here? So we, we mm -hmm. have the beautiful logo. You have yep. a couple of desks here. Is this kind of like the, the money pit? Is, yeah. What is this right here? So this is mostly agents right now. So agents okay. come and go. You know, obviously we have like 25 right now, but a lot of them are in the field. They're grinding. Um, some of them are here making calls, doing okay. marketing, stuff like that. So agents, agents. We have a couple of lenders that sit there on the end. So we have in-house like lenders that we work with. And so, you know, our agents can rely on them. They can do whatever. Um, they're really integrated into a lot of our operations. And then over here, so that's mostly acquisitions where they're okay. at, at that first one. Um, they're um, uh, basically a couple of them are working on getting their license, but they started as acquisitions people just wholesaling okay. uh, nationwide, right? So we're doing a lot of properties in Atlanta, Georgia, North Carolina, Birmingham, Phoenix, obviously. Um, and then on the far end, we're building out the media company right now. Okay. So. So it seems like you're doing different states. How do you transition into different states? It looks like you kind of mirror match model and just took it on to a different state, right? Pretty much. You just, yeah. So once you build it mm -hmm. and then you have the system, right? So we always got good at Arizona. Arizona was our bread and butter. Um, the thing is that Arizona is the most competitive market yeah. in the country, right? So when you look at that and you say, okay, if we can be successful in Arizona, we could be really successful somewhere else. Yeah. The only difference is, is when you're wholesaling in a different market, you don't, you can't go view the property, right? So you got to rely on pictures and you've got to rely on you know, different apps, you know, send, mm -hmm. send somebody out to take pictures using, you know, uh, an app, right? Or, yeah. or you know, going on Facebook and, and getting people mm -hmm. to do different things for you. So that really is the main difference. Yeah. Got it. Now this is kind of piqued my interest right here. Mm -hmm. what, what is this board right here? That board is actually, so this is Dylan. My, uh, he's a sales manager for my Zayback group, the retail company. Okay. So he's using this board basically. Um, this is, we, we're building an in-house communications department. Okay. Which is essentially just an ISA, in-house ISA department. Okay. So that was the board that we're using for her. She's out, out of town right now. Okay. Yep. So. And uh, how many uh, escrows do you guys currently have right now? So those are some of the escrows that we have on the retail side. Okay. Um, in, in escrow right this second. So probably, I want to say we have probably 15 million in escrow right now. Okay. Yep. And then that board over there are the escrows that we have on the wholesale side. Okay. What do we have here on the wholesale side? Probably seven or eight million and at any given time. Wholesaling's quick. Yeah. Turn and burn, right? So like, you know, you might only have deals on the, you know, like where those deals might stay up there for 30 or 45 yeah. days. These deals might be up here for five days. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so the average acquisition on here is about what, 10 grand? A deal? Um, the average like assignment, yeah. the average profit, it depends. I mean, we just, Andrew right here actually just last month got like two really big deals where we made, I believe like 70 grand on a deal and like 50 grand on a deal. Mm -hmm. um, both of those were in a different market. Okay. So both of those were back east. So how do you pay your agents here or actually your acquisition guys here versus yeah. your regular agents? So acquisitions guys make a percentage of net profit. Okay. Of the company. Now, yep. if they came here and they wanted to learn from you, mm -hmm. right, uh, do you kind of like start them on a tier bracket? Hey, this is where you're at. Yep. As you get better, 
we're going to increase that commission? Yeah, so over the years, we've like played around with it a bunch. Like What we do now is like you could start as a lead manager, yeah. and then you could work your way up to an acquisitions. Okay. Um, and so we actually have several people that aren't currently sitting here right now, but that's kind of the idea. Our thing is we don't want too many people either. I've played that game. I've played yeah. the game of like having this office busting at the seams. Mm -hmm. Then you run into like, like a boiler room, like a total <laughs> boiler room. Right. Yeah. But then you've got, you know, people aren't trained. They don't know what yeah. they're doing. Like they're burning up, you know, uh, a lot of our leads. So we actually own a VA company in the Philippines. So we mm -hmm. have 32 VAs that work for us internally full time. And then they're outbound cold calling all day long, right? Those leads go right here. Okay. So, and then they're doing the follow-up calls. So, the, um, what he's saying is virtual assistants, mm -hmm. right? So, basically, if you have a virtual assistant, how, how are you getting the leads? And how many leads do you actually have? So, we're buying data by the millions. Okay. Um, we have, uh, basically, relationships with the credit bureaus. So, when we pull data, we're pulling, like, a million records at a time. Now, obviously, we worked our way there, right? Yeah. So if you were just starting out, you could use like PropStream or you could use, yeah. you know, a normal data source. Um, but so we're basically getting about a million to two million records at a time. We skip trace all that data mm -hmm. and then our cold callers are dialing it. Our average caller dials about 800 dials a day mm -hmm. times 32. So we're dialing anywhere from 20 to 25,000 people a day. Wow, you guys are doing volume. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yep. So then our average VAs generate about five leads a day yeah. per VA times 32, and all of those leads come into our nice. acquisitions department. Now, let, let's go back, skip tracing, explain to them what skip tracing is. So skip tracing is just taking a piece of data, a record, yeah. and getting the contact information, mm -hmm. right? So if I knew that, you know, John Smith lived on 123 Main Street, mm -hmm. well, that's great, but how do I get a hold of him, Yeah. right? So, you know, once you buy data, so like, let's say I say, um, you know, I wanna buy data where people have high equity. Right, I can filter for different types of yeah. data. I want to get data where people are getting a divorce or people are going into pre foreclosure or whatever. Then I've got all the data, right? I've got all the addresses and names and everything like that. Uh, they fit that criteria, but I don't have any contact information. Yeah. So when you run it through skip tracing, is obviously, as you know, you get all the contact yeah. info. Yep. Now, also, I want to go back to on the on your agents here. What is the commission splits if somebody mm -hmm. wanted to join your company? So our, we actually, so we're under the umbrella of EXP. So I just about a year ago moved over to the brokerage EXP, which okay. I'm sure you're aware of. Now EXP is very strict on teams. So teams all have to abide by very similar rules with EXP, which I like because then agents aren't bouncing from one team to the next because that guy over there offers a better split, right? Yeah. Because it, it, you can't do that. So um, it, it's really simple. It's 50-50 team gen, 75-25 mm -hmm. uh, self gen. Okay. Yep. And uh, how do you end up keeping agents on your team? Because I see a lot of real estate teams out there. They'll have a team leader or somebody that just generates business, but then their agents typically come and go. Yeah. You're always going to deal with that to some degree, yeah. right? Um, you can't totally avoid that. You know, you just have to wish them well if, if they believe that they can do better without you, you mm -hmm. know? I think culture is huge, right? So culture, everybody wants to be a part of something, myself included, right? I can yeah. go build all this stuff by myself, but I'd never be able to do it like as big as we, I can do it with a bunch of people, right? So my mentor said a long time ago, he said, you can go fast alone, you can go far with people. Yeah. So I've built a good culture and, and, and everybody here has uh, contributed to that culture, right? and uh, they do every single day. And so I think that's the biggest thing, culture and opportunity, right? Are you providing the right opportunity to your team? You know, mm -hmm. do you give them the tools and resources to succeed? Does it make sense to be with you, right? Like, and, and if the answer is yes, then they'll stay. If the answer is no, then they'll leave. How much is your overhead for something like this? In total? Yeah. Uh, probably about a hundred grand a month. hundred grand a month, whoa, yeah. that's pretty big. Yeah. So you must be killing it then. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, that's obviously wholesaling. That's, yeah. that's our office. That's everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you really look at our marketing and our VAs and everything that we do, yeah. that's really looking at the bigger picture and taking all of that into account. Now, obviously everything's separated. You know, yeah. when you look at the individual companies and the LLCs and the entities and where the income comes from, you know, it's all, you know, seven or eight different uh, LLCs and bank accounts and the whole thing. You ever feel pressured with the, all that? I mean, that's that's a pretty big responsibility, yeah. especially at your age. For sure, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, pressure is a good thing. You mm -hmm. know, pressure makes diamonds. Um, I operate good, but my back's up against the wall. I think it's good back support. You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think that uh, anybody that ever achieved anything phenomenal in life was under a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of times you brought up uh, mentors. Mm -hmm. How important is that to you, and why is that so important? I think, I think having a mentor is everything, you know, yeah. um, I mean, essentially you'd have to think of, in my opinion, a mentor is just 
looking at somebody that you know has what you want right in the future it's like okay in this particular area this person has yeah. what i want and they can help me shortcut the learning curve. Mm -hmm. Simple as that, right? So it's it, one, or, one of two options. At any given time as a human, I can go make the mistakes myself, learn trial and error, yeah. trial and tribulation, waste a bunch of time, or somebody can just straight up, I can call them and be like, yo, should I do this? And they're like, no, 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 don't do that, do this. Yeah. Right, and how much time did that save me? And so if time is money and time is our most valuable commodity, then shouldn't a mentor be the most valuable thing? Now, let me ask you this. How many flip properties do you have going on right now here? We only have probably four flips going on right now. Four flips? Yeah. So back backing up a little bit. So we flipped a bunch in 2019 and 2020. Okay. Really even like 2018 through 2020. Um, then uh, everything happened, right, in the yeah, world. Yeah. And uh, then hedge funds got really big, right? We were one of the first people to start building relationships with the biggest hedge funds. Now, during that time, from 2020 to 2022, we could make more money selling a deal to a hedge fund than we could flipping it. Really? Without doing anything. Wow. Because that was just the way it was, right? So we stopped flipping practically. We did a few here and there, right? But the name of the game was just to sell to hedge funds. Now that's shifting back again, right? Yeah. So now over the next couple of months, we're getting back into the flipping game. We're gonna go raise more capital, probably do a lot more. My goal is to scale that. Yeah. See, that's, that's what I love about real estate. You can always reposition. Mm -hmm. You can see what's going on with the market and you can actually catch that curb, that yield curb ahead and you can literally yeah. get there faster and you can reposition yourself and constantly keep moving. Yeah, don't you love that? Yeah. You can adapt, man. Exactly. You, Just you're constantly pivoting and yeah. profiting. So that's what be, I like about it. You do got to be nimble, though. Yeah. I think you know some people aren't nimble. Where like yeah. the market changes and then they look up and they're like, "What happened?" You know? Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, I remember like 90 days ago, we were just focusing on buyers and we had so much buyers, we're getting them under contract. Now within like 10 days, we just shift over directly into listings. And now we just, that's all we focus on yeah. now is just listings. Yep. So we, you always got to pivot in profit. So you that's do. what I love about real estate. hundred percent. Now yeah. uh, we mentioned that uh, talking about your flip properties and uh, we're probably going to go look yeah. at a few, right? Mm -hmm. We are. Yep. All right. So are you guys ready to go take a look at some of these flip properties? All right. You ready? Cool. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. He goes, why don't you become a real estate agent? I'll take you under my blood. That way, Jake was on a short sale period. See right there. So tore off the patio. Yeah. So um, yeah, dude. So right now, basically, this wall is in the rental. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because so. now that's really an open question. 